today we'll be working on activity 1.2.7 for uh, aerospace engineering, uh, airfoil construction. Uh, hopefully we've completed 126 and we have an airfoil design and now we're going to uh, set up so we can create this uh, design in Inventor. Uh, so we're going to go to our foil sim. Uh, hopefully you have it set up. You've created your air, airfoil. Uh, you may have looked at the flight, the shape of it, done an analysis, looked at how it functions. Uh, in this case, I have an airfoil. I'm going to select the uh, ellipse-shaped one, and we're going to look at the shape and size of it and use that to help us create our data graph here. Uh, so we have our shape, and we've created it, and now we want to get our X and Y points as we work through 127. So you can see at first it wants our shape and geometry. So we'll go to shape and geometry and that gives us our X and Y points. Uh, from there we want to select by highlighting our X and Y points uh, for the entire airfoil. So I'm just going to control C to copy and then I'm going to put it into a spreadsheet. Personally I'm going to use uh, Google Sheets, uh, Google School, so we're going to use Google Sheets. Uh, when we do this, I don't need this upper surface label anymore. I don't need the uh, X, Y, Z labels or the lower surface. I'm going to delete these three empty rows. Uh, so I'm going to find where I can delete these three rows, delete these rows, and now I have all this data, but it's all in the same row, so it's not columned out like I need to. Uh, so then the so let's put in columns and then data, uh, split text to columns, and then how to separate it. There's spaces between them, so I'm going to select space, uh, and that should separate them. In this case, I only selected the first row. I wanted to select all of them, so I'm actually going to go back. And so let's have to do that again. So I selected uh, column A. I'm going to data, split text to columns. And then where it says detect automatically, I'm going to select space. And that sp spreads them out so I can select my X, my Y. I'm going to label it Z because I'm going to call it Z later. And I'm going to delete these last two columns as I prepare to create it in the event. So I'm going to delete those last two columns. Now I have my X, Y coordinate. I also says to label the inch as inches. So I want inches. Uh, in this case, we have our X, our Y, our Z, and our inches. Uh, it then says to put it in a new Excel spreadsheet. I could just do file and I could sit download this as an Excel if I have it formatted correctly. Uh, in this case, I'll just follow the directions and put it in the Excel spreadsheet though. So I'm going to copy, again, open my Excel spreadsheet. I have a blank spreadsheet here and then paste starting in A1. Uh, control Once I have that created, I'm going to save as so I can save that document into a location that I can find. And I'm just going to call it my airfoil. Uh, once I have those points saved, now I want to go up to Inventor so I can uh, create this shape in Inventor. So I go to Inventor, I just start a new standard part, so I start a part, and once it starts up, I'm going to create a sketch on my XY plane. So once it starts up, we want to start a sketch on our XY plane. Uh, then we're just going to insert the points, so I'm going to go to Insert here on the upper right hand side and click on Points. Uh, I'm going to add these as points. Sometimes it says to create a spline. A lot of times people have difficulty with that. So I'm just going to create points and then connect them with splines. So I hit OK. Uh, then I go to my folder and I have to find where I saved it, which is in my aerospace folder. So I'm going to go back to my aerospace folder and it's in my unit one. Then I have my points E and I'm going to open that. When I do so, you can see it creates this airfoil shape. Uh, then it's just a matter of essentially playing connect the dots. Uh, but I don't want to use lines. I'm actually going to use a spline to give us a more smooth shape. 
Uh, so I'm just going to start in the back corner and work my way around uh, playing connect the dots essentially. So dot to dot to dot all the way around this object. Uh, pretty straightforward, not the most entertaining part of this task, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, make sure you, you wait until you get the green dot and then you click. Uh, as we make our way around, you can see we got lots of points to connect. Again, make sure you got the green dot. That's how you know you're on your point that you have out there. Once we have our dots, we can go all the way around the object and create our airfoil shape. Uh, sometimes you can create a spline when you add the shape. A lot of times students have difficulty where it cuts through the center of the object and you can't just trim it. So it ends up just being easy to connect your dots as you go around the object. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm not doing it, I could go a little quicker, but that's okay, we'll get it created. Bouncing around my spline. And a lot of times I do it as two separate splines, each one ending at either front and back end. Uh, in this case, just to do a little quick, I'm just doing one single spline. So it may be a bit off on my front point, but just to give you an overall idea of the shape. So we almost got all our dots connected. So now we have a connected shape. Hopefully I hit it even on the back and it looks like I did. So once you have your dots connected, then you have a closed shape which you can extrude. Uh, so I'm going to finish shape and then I'm going to hit extrude. Uh, in this case, I'm going to extrude it a total of three inches. Uh, so it's going to oh, well, just do one, one inch in this case and hit OK. Uh, sometimes you have to change your overall dimension. Uh, if you want to, sometimes uh, you would take these values and multiply them by four uh, just to get a larger shape. Uh, for this case, I'm just going to keep it as this standard one inch size. Uh, if I go to 3D print it, which we will end up doing, I'm just going to uh, scale it up by 400% uh, to get the, that four inches. It's going to give me the same overall dimensions though. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully this helped you in your creation of your airfoil. Again, this is working through activity uh, 127 on PLTW. So 127 PLTW engineering. Uh, thank you and good luck.